Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. And we're going to get back on this German uh, German radio. And uh, boy, it is so big. Uh, I'm sitting here pondering whether I should take it out of its cabinet. That's that's the big decision I'm looking at right now. And I've got it. I've got it on my uh, on my uh, chair here, my shop chair. It is so big. It really doesn't fit well on my bench. I mean, it's gigantic. So, uh, plus having it up on my chair allows me to do this, spin it around, study it a bit more. And uh, also, um, I get access to the screws on the bottom and the like. So this is actually a pretty sensible place to put it up on top of my chair. But you know what? i got no place to sit down now. So, now there's a few things about this. Uh, radio that have got me pretty nervous about pulling it out. Um, first of all, this is a big radio. And uh, extracting it shouldn't be too difficult. But some of the complications come from over on this side here. Let's see if I can show you some of that. This big whopping power supply, or transformer rather, uh, this big heavy thing and this particular model appears to be bolted into the chassis. But on a lot of these radios, this part is actually uh, bolted separately to the case. And you have to lift out the chassis and this together uh, with just some wires holding it. Some, sometimes these can be unplugged also. Um, but not this one. This one's wired right in and for sure it's bolted in right here. I can see it. That's a big honking thing. The real problem is what's in behind it. And I noticed this earlier. We'll have to explore this a little more. But uh, I'll show you what I'm seeing here. Oops. Okay, so there's that big honking transformer. And you know, I'm very suspicious about this speaker too. The speaker here is loose. Not, it's not screwed in, and I suspect that's not an oversight. I suspect there's some kind of reason for that. But the real problem is in the back there. Those, those two other transformers, choke coils, output transformers, I have no idea what those are sitting there, and they just don't look original to me. Now how are they in there? Are they just kind of shoved in there? Are they bolted down somehow? Are they bolted to the chassis? If I pull the radio out, do they stay behind? Are they going to get mucked up? What are they anyway? So I, I really don't, I'm really very curious about that stuff. And of course the big question is, if I pull this radio out, what benefit is there? What risk is there? <laughs> if you just watched my last uh, video on the uh, simplex radio, you'll see that in order to fix a, a loose screw, I've ended up in quite a jackpot from taking things apart innocently enough. Not that I did anything wrong. It's just you never know for sure what the consequences are of doing these things. So it's wise to stop and think hard before taking a big step on one of these radios. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Now the problem with the radio is not much really. It seems to be working in all respects except FM. And typically, that kind of problem comes from a defective uh, tube here. That's quite common. Or perhaps there's a second FM only tube in this radio. Could, could be this one, could be that one, I don't know. If it's just a tube, for crying out loud, I don't want to pull this chassis out uh, just for the sake of a tube and maybe encounter more serious problems in just doing the extraction, all because of these complications over here. Yeah. You know, I think I'm going to be very conservative here and uh, continue to do some more testing uh, on the radio. Hey, think about the last one, that simplex. What was wrong with that simplex? I don't know. I just fiddled with it for a few hours and Presto, it seemed to be working. It could have been working the whole time, and maybe I was dumb. Sort of just, just didn't do the right things to discover it was working. 
I don't know. The same thing could happen with this radio. There's really nothing wrong with it at all. And just poking around, suddenly it's going to come to life. I mean, that's a bit of a long shot. But we are playing here with a whole bunch of different odds. The odds of damaging it, by working on it, etc. Uh, it's just possible that somebody's come in and turned these controls um, and just knocked this thing out of adjustment. And again, well, what would be the benefit of pulling it out of its cabinet? Uh, a few other things here. The lights, the lights look a little odd to me. How they've been done here. Now this one in particular, of course. Yeah, this is a little odd here too. Look at the, uh, the cut wire here. That's really quite odd. But these lights appear to be in series. just going to ground there. Let's see. I, I can't see it with my eyes, but maybe I can see it with the... Yeah, it's just soldered to the to this box. Not the best place to do it. So that's a little odd what they're doing with these lights on the front panel. Not normally are they in series. Normally they come off the big power transformer, all hooked up in parallel on the, the 6.3 volt heater line for tubes. That's the usual thing. So that, that's a little strange too. I don't like it. Somebody's been in here and done a lot of stuff to this set. That's what it looks like to me. And again, I'm not suggesting what the person did was uh, bad or wrong. It could have been extremely clever. Um, but that just adds complications for me. That's my thinking on this guy. Hmm. Let's plug him in and be absolutely convinced that the FM doesn't work doesn't work at all. Uh, I think that's what I got to do here, so let me get on with that. Okay, so I've just simply put a my uh, cheater cord on here, so it's ready to be plugged in. And I noticed another factor in removing this, uh, this radio from its uh, chassis. And uh, you can kind of get a look at it here. This is the far edge of the front glass, if you like. And there's another far edge on the other side. And those things, they are almost as wide as the cabinet itself. And so the idea of just, you know, loosen a few screws and pull the cabinet straight out, that's not happening with this radio at all. Um, I think these speakers interfere with pulling it out. Um, and I'm really quite concerned now. Uh, these extra transformers aren't going to make the situation easier either. And that uh, this is in fact quite a, quite a challenge to pull this out on a radio this size. Um, so let's, uh, let's operate it again. And you've got to utterly convince me <laughs> that it needs to come out. I'm just not too happy about it here. You know, if in the end it's something like a, a burned resistor or open capacitor or something like that. Well, I guess eventually it'll have to come out. But really. Uh, I really don't want to do that. So let's swing around here. And we'll, uh, we'll switch on. Okay, I'm going to plug it in. We're going to do the current restriction thing, just as a matter of practice here. Okay, and then we're going to switch on, and we'll switch on the, uh, we're aiming for the AM band. There we go. You can see it's lit up. Uh, it looks a lot brighter on camera than it does in real life. It's really very dull. Yeah, three lights in series. It's probably not at all correct. 
I'm going to get my hand on the volume control here. Let's turn down. You know, I don't have an AM antenna in there. Oh yeah, there's a loop antenna. All right. Just give it a moment here to warm up. It, the voltage is below 70% of the full line voltage, so it's really pretty, pretty crazy low here right now. You know, another problem I hadn't mentioned, and then one of, the, one of the biggest problems with pulling the radio out of the cabinet is you leave the speakers behind, and you can't necessarily have the speakers from this radio plugged back into the chassis because the wire is just nowhere near long enough. And the result of that is you have to hook up uh, your own speakers, and that in itself is a problem. Getting that right, uh, everything we can do to leave this in the chassis. And you know what else might be the case? Come to think of it. Look. Ooh, let me turn it that way. I'm going to wind the power cord up. There's just enough room in my shop to spin this around. Is there an access plate? Yes, there is an access plate. Ooh, thumbs up on the access plate. Okay, so we're not taking this radio out. We will work through that access plate long before we take it out. Ah, the brain power, Jim. You see, when I work in the morning, I have more synapses firing than later in the evening. If I did this in the evening, I'd probably have this chassis out on my bench by now. Tears rolling down my face. So, but here in the morning? Yes. Hey, you know what? The weather up here near Toronto today, the weather's going to go up to almost uh, 15, 16, 17 degrees, something like that, which is very spring-like. And then late today, 11 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, somewhere there, it's going to start getting colder. It's going to shoot all the way down to minus 3 and snow on us again. Can you believe it? Snow on us. But that shouldn't last long at all. Anyway, but uh, wow. <laughs> mm, summer's not coming quick enough here. Well, why are we not hearing a thing? Oh yeah, antenna, antenna. Now that I have it turned around, this should be easy. Okay, so that's where the AM antenna goes. And we'll connect it to the, uh, the outdoor antenna, which I have all kinds of plans in my head to improve now that the weather has changed. So that's on the outdoor antenna now. Um, I hear nothing. I hear nothing. Oh yeah, the output's very weak on this radio. So I'm turning it right up full. That's not a very good sign in itself, is it? Could be weak output tube, weak audio tube. Uh, defective components, but the one that, that makes me a little nervous is uh, positive leakage onto the grid, pushing the grid positive. That'll uh, shove up the uh, current flow through the output tube and uh, potentially damage the tube and the whole shot. So I'm a little worried when you have this low output. We are also on restricted power big time here. Uh, that's going to keep it low. Well, let's take it off restricted power. Because we're going to need full power to run the FM side anyway. Oh, look at how much it brightened up. <laughs> now it looks normally bright. Oh, these have come on nice. Wrong camera here. Yeah, so these have come on. These are the uh, indicators. This is the AM indicator. And the other side is the FM indicator. You see the FM indicator is constantly indicating a strong signal. It never indicates any but. And I know you can't see that in the camera clearly because of lighting and problems like that. So here we are on AM. Now we got some volume. Now 
not receiving anything. See the eye work here? Let me see if I can get that a little better. <laughs> Lots of reflections in my shop here. Yeah, you can kind of see it work there. Just not going to work on camera because of lighting lighting uh, issues. But trust me, the AM one seems to be working just fine. The FM one, no. Okay, so let's put it on FM. There we go. FM in German talk is UW. We're on FM. There's zero volume. No. Hey. What's going on? Oh, that's the... Uh, that's okay. I'll be okay. You, yes, a couple of those synapses must have just gone to sleep here. <laughs> this is exactly what we got last time. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. Something everywhere, but nothing on the FM. Even if we push lots of buttons here. Why do we pump a very powerful signal into it? Let's do that. We'll, we'll hit it with my uh, FM transmitter here, which puts out, as we, so it seems to me, a really strong signal. I don't know what that looks like on your screen, but <laughs> it's a strange looking thing I just put in front of the camera there. Isn't that cool? Huh. Okay, let me hook this up to the output of my Okay, so this strange thing while it was vibrating, that was pretty cool. Here's what we've got here. It's just an antenna. Okay, and I'm feeding the FM signal into this antenna. I can bring it very, very close to the radio. So I'm not going to hook up directly to the radio. That funny thing is just the vibrating. Look at that. Hey, you never know what's going to fascinate me. Okay. So we have a strong FM signal now. Right around 100. You know, there just isn't a sound coming out of this at all. Except a hum. Just a hum. It's a dead zero. As opposed to a live zero. Okay. That's pretty convincing to me that the FM is not working at all. So I really think the next thing we need to do here this tube is ice cold. This tube is ice cold. That's warm. So there we are. These two tubes are ice cold. Ah, 
that's uh, that's an unusual thing. Now, I've got the schematic for this somewhere. What did I do? With it? Hey, there it is. Right there. Right there. Oh, gotta climb around this gigantic radio. Oh my gosh, here it is. Pretty sure this is the one. Low. Off the, that word on the front that I couldn't read before is Hellas. H E L L A S. Hellas. No, not the kind of word you'd normally use in English because of the uh, hell part of it. <laughs> I better watch out. I got this metal metal part of my clip lead going, or my uh, my clipboard going into the set here. So, okay, so ECC81. Yeah, I'm going to study this because look at it. This is a monster to try to go through on, on screen with you there. But I think it's a great observation. These two tubes have got no heater current. Um, that should be fairly easy to sort out. Pretty sure. So I'm going to study the schematic and figure out why would two tubes not have any heat. Two is great. Two really indicates there's something going on in the radio. One. If one of these wasn't heating up, it would suggest it's the tube itself. But do I remember right? I think I tested this tube. That's a good sign. Hey, I, I'm loaded with hope. Okay, so we're looking at the schematic here on camera. And uh, you know what? That's what it looks like with my eyeballs, too. Uh, it's a very, very small diagram. Here's a screwdriver for comparison here. This is a photocopy of the schematic that actually came with the radio inside this envelope here. That's why it's so small. Well, I'm tempted to rescan it on my computer and blow it up, but let's, let's try it with the camera here. Now, really what I want to do on the schematic is just verify which two tubes should be where. And, uh, oh man, hey, oh, 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 I think I see a tube layout diagram down at the bottom here. I think that's what I see there. Let's, let's take a closer look. Man, there's a lot of information on here, isn't there? Holy smokes. All of it cleverly coded in here. It's like a lot of information about all the uh, tuning, the switches those are all the tubes there but they're not quite showing them in their position are they what's going on oh my gosh This right here is the tuner. There's the antenna. So I think that's showing what tube goes in right there. It looks like ECC81 to me. Is this supposed to be the layout of the radio here? Down here? Because if that is the uh, tuner, or does it say ECC 85? like ECCR exclamation point. You know, I guess that that's 85. And uh, that's what's that's how it is in the radio. I'm pretty sure an 85 is in the tuner. Maybe I cut the bottom of the uh, information off here. Maybe uh, when I photocopied this, oh no, I missed a bit of it. Let me bring out the real McCoy here.
information that came with the radio. Isn't that cool? The Hellas, not the best name for a North American radio. Here's the schematic though. Oh no, this is a letter. This is a letter of instructions. Because uh, everything was in German. Somebody actually wrote in English. Here's the schematic here. Okay. Oh, see, I don't want to tear it. So there it is. And down at the bottom. Well, I may have trimmed a little off over here. Uh, but the bulk of what we're looking at is on there. So no, I didn't miss anything. writing on the symbol up here. That's Peter's phone number. Sean's phone number. Hills might have been the previous guys taking care of the radio. So, okay, I think on that little bit of evidence we'll have to assume the tubes are in the right place. You know, it would be easy to swap two tubes and then not have them heat up because the heaters are no longer in the right, you know, no longer match the uh, the circuit layout on the socket they went in. So you could easily see those two tubes being swapped. But, I mean, it also has another indicator and that's uh, ECC81 written right here. Let me show you that. Another hint is someone has put a sticker down and written the numbers on them, ECC81, ECH81. I didn't bother with this guy, but he's the 85. And this is definitely an 81 in here. Well, I think the next step now is to check those tubes. And I think the way I'm going to do it is uh, I'm just going to check their heater, make sure the heater isn't open on them. So I get my camera set here. Sort of like that. No, how about uh, how about like this? Ah, ah. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. So to check the heater, I got to get the pin layout. And to get the pin layout, I like using this British uh, website called the Valve Museum. Now, I'm sure there's other resources around, but. I like the Valve Museum. The National Valve Museum. Fantastic. Of course, these are European tubes, so why not go and check it? So the first one we're going to look at is this one up here. This is the e e was it ECH, ECC85. ECC85. This site has photographs of everything. Sometimes multiple photographs. E C H eighty five. E a lot of tubes. E C E C C E C H E C H eighty two eighty five. E C no E C L. Ch. Oh, there's no ECH85. What am I doing here? I got something mixed up. ECC85. 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 There it is. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at that too. I'm not sure how well this is going to come across here. ECC85. Look at uh, Mr. Mullard's tube version of it. It's all the same. Come on. There we go. The 
There it is. Here's what we need to know. Okay, heaters are pin 4 and 5. Pins 4 and 5. So pull it out. Pins 4 and 5. One, two, three, four, and five. Get my, uh, my meter here. Hope that'll stay there. Okay, four. Look, it's the same pins, even if you flip these tubes back and forth for each other, you still have heaters in the heater. Oh, man, I feel that overwhelming pull. Take me out, says the chassis. Take me out. Oh, man. Now, what else could be wrong? What could be going on here that two tubes don't heat? Maybe those two tubes only receive their power when the FM button is pushed. Hey. I think I had this thing switched on FM, didn't I? Where is it switched now? Yeah, it's on FM. It's switched on FM. So if that's the case, then the heaters should have come on those tubes. That'd be a little strange though, don't you think? Um, making a radio where the FM tubes don't heat until you switch to FM because then you'd experience a wait time. Now, that doesn't make sense. Uh, for what? And, and why not heat them? Two tubes out of all this? It's another 10, 12 watts or something at the most? What would it matter? It's more like 6 watts. watts. I can't imagine that. I've never heard of that being done, actually. Oh, I just got an idea. No, I just got an email. That's actually what that was. I probably got an email from you just now telling me what I did wrong on the last radio. <laughs> uh, I'm a little stumped here. Uh, next move would be study this schematic very, very carefully. Try to understand the circuitry around the heaters on these two tubes and develop a theory. That's what I'll have to do at this point. I must go develop a theory. I think I need a theory. 